Hello, I'd like to talk today about adding uh, elevation or verticality to your encounter maps in Map Tool. In the lower right, I have a GitHub link that you can uh, type into your browser and go download this. When you go to GitHub, um, you can go to releases or the tags and download 1.0 alpha 6. That's the most recent version. So. First, this is a map set up. You can see that there is a elf character and a mage character that are faded with up arrows. That means they're on an elevation above um, the rogue and the hero. Let's go ahead and look what it lo uh, look at the second level. So you'll see that the uh, uh, the second story has the elf character on it. The elf can go to the edge here of the window and look and see down below the troll and the hero. Let's turn off player view so you can see this in a little more detail. Uh, the whole map has changed. And now if I click on the hero and I click this token up down that matches the token elevation, I'll zip down again to the floor level. And if I click on the mage, I can zip to the flying level and see all my friends down below. And this map is configured that some of the non-player characters, specifically these goblins near the rogue, stay and this body stay on the lower level while I can tra traverse levels up and down. There's some other features using other small libraries on this particular map such as if the hero moves up these stairs, it switches automatically to the next level, and there are doors you can click to open and close uh, to access or block movement and vision. And if you pass down here, it'll move you back down a floor. And of course, players cannot see those pads. Um, let's talk about how you set this up. It's pretty easy. So I'm gonna make a brand new campaign and we're just going to drag the elevation library over. In the selected panel, you can also right click and go to macros, automation on campaign load. But in the selected panel, I'll just scroll down, hit the green on campaign load button. And once you save your game, you'll never have to do that again. It'll happen automatically. This loads a lot of functions to help uh, to make the library work. So now let's add a map. I'm going to use a default map. We're going to use the FVR in Highlands. And we're going to say 75 pixels per cell, because that happens to be what this map uses. And then we're just going to hit OK. Lovely map. Now we're going to add movement and vision blocking. First, I'd like to add a frame around the whole thing. Next. Let's add some trees. I want my trees to block vision, but not movement. So we're just gonna do a few X's. Let's turn on our grid. We're gonna X out a few squares. Just kinda, I use control to snap to the edges. This is not the best way uh, because the center of the square is getting blocked. Usually I would do this uh, off center, but right now we're just doing a few trees kind of Bob Ross style to give a little bit of texture to our map. Okay, next we want to probably block vision and movement into this little tower, this little roofless tower here. And I like to add the circle and then if you hit shift, it'll remove filled circle, even if you don't select the filled circle tool, which is really nice. Lastly, I'd like to block movement down to this lower waterfall area and this lower river area. I don't want people to be able to go down there. Uh, and I want to guide people across the bridge. So we're going to, first I'm going to add the, uh, it's movement only we're blocking. So first I'm going to add the left side here. We're not going to worry too much about the edges. Um, I will say normally I block edges very particularly. I might, if I was setting this up, well, might as well do it correctly the first time. So we're just going to 
block this. I'm going to leave a little bit of a path down. And I don't want them walking on the squares that I'm marking. And I'm just marking all the squares I don't want them moving on. That's a little different with uh, the elevation library. Those will be available when you're at that elevation, but not before. So we're just blocking out the whole river. This isn't strictly necessary. Could have just traced the edges. That would work just fine. I just like to do it this way. And I'm going to let them walk sort of down here. And that'll be my cue to let them down into the river basin. Okay. We have a very simple bridge. We have a very simple tower and some trees. Let's test our little map. All we need is a hero. And so far, none of this is special. This is all default map tool capability. If you hit normal, you'll see the uh, vision as you mouse over. You can see all the trees. We're going to add fog just to add that little bit of magic that the soft fog of war gives you to really visualize how the trees look with that tower. Also, I have AI enabled, so when it's green, it is enabled, and I can move across the bridge. I move down the bank, but not into the river. When you don't see a path, there's no path. It doesn't actually prevent you from dropping there. Um, Pathfinding is to assist you in choosing a valid move, not to actually block movement. All right, so let's add this as our ground layer. I'm gonna add elevation, zero, ground is the default, um, the elevation height is just sort of think of sea level. Zero is ground level, or uh, it could be sea level uh, if you have an ocean side map. That would be just fine. It's just for your reference, and it's relative, right? Uh, so I'm going to choose zero. Its name is going to be ground, and I'm going to start with what I set up here. Start with the map's current blocking layers, and then I still have these. It says ground over here on the right. And now let's say I have a mage who can fly, or even better yet, let's add an eagle. I'm going to give the eagle sight as well. Great, this eagle looks like it's flying though, and it's, it's just not. So let's fix that. Uh, we're going to add an elevation. We're going to put it at 60 feet in the air. I'm using feet. Uh, you might want to use meters. That's probably smarter. I recommend it. Um, never never got into that myself. But we're going to call this flying. You'll notice there are more options now because elevations are now enabled uh, because I added a first one. Don't worry about these. It says discard changes to the current or save current elevation values. Uh, that means if you made a change before switching, to the BBL MBL, you can undo those changes by discarding those changes. Uh, we don't need to do that. We can save the current values. It doesn't matter right now. They are saved because we created that. Um, I'm getting a little in the weeds there. Sorry. Uh, we now have a flying and we have a ground. Now on the flying, you can actually select these while you're drawing. Let's move the bird up to, oh, we moved down to where the bird is. We want to move, go to move to flying, and we're going to click this up 60. That moves it to the next key elevation, which is flying. And let's just go ahead and clear all of the movement and vision from the map. You can do control to block, uh, snap to the edges, and shift to remove. I'm using the filled square tool. And now you can see we have our ground level and our flying level. Fantastic. Now our bird, if I move it a little, it'll reset all that, can fly anywhere they want with pathing and see anywhere they want. Wonderful. You can use the mouse wheel with control shift to get those fine tuning adjustments on our facing. Those are live for players. It's kind of fun. If I click on ground here, it restores all of these. And if I move the hero, who's on the ground level, we're good to go. 
Notice the eagle is also restricted by the ground level. So we might want to be able to tell that the eagle is actually above the hero here. To do that, all you need to do is add a few states to your campaign. In the campaign properties under the edit menu, open it up, click on the states. I like to use other three and other four. I just kind of adopt them. I call them is above with the up arrow and click update. And other three I'm going to call is below, update, uh, and we're going to change that color to a, to a teal. Oop, update, there we go. Um, I also like to make these a little different. I like to make them grid triangles. Uh, oh, I forgot to save that one. Grid triangles. Two by two is great. And grid yield. Two by two is great. And that just, it's a two by two grid. You can fit four of them and they'll stack. Uh, and I'm also going to make this one, other two, an is elevation token state. This is a special state I only want the GM to see. You'll learn more about it later. We're going to use, um, let's use a green, or let's actually also do a teal. I kind of like that color. We're going to make it on mouse over only. You'll understand that later. We're also going to make it shaded. It's just a shaded square and opacity about 25% is great. You'll see, and we have to update that. You'll see why that's valuable later. But right now, let's go ahead and zip to our eagle. And now the hero fades and has a down arrow. So we know that it's below us. And if I go down to the hero's level, I can see that the eagle is above. You can see that it's larger because the footprint determines the size <laughs> and when you're yeah that's just a weird feature of the feature of map tool but this is great i can know which elevation other tokens are on and i can move around between elevations whenever i wish and they will be marked correctly wonderful but what if i want to go down into the river let's add a new elevation at negative 15 let's say that's 15 feet down. It's a quick drop. And we're going to call it river. We're going to start with the ground's elevation. That's exactly what we want to do. Uh, and we don't need to worry about elevation tokens. Uh, we didn't change the values, so we can discard those changes. It's fine. All right. So now we have, or on the river, it didn't, you notice it did not uh, refresh. If I click on ground, and then click on river again, you'll see the hero is above the river level. But the river right now has the same situation. I want to remove all movement blocking. Uh, first, let's add some vision blocking, however, just so we know where our boundaries are. Using the polyline fill, we're going to, or not filled, they're just polyline uh, VBL. We're going to add some vision blocking around the edges. And we're going to go right under the bridge there. You can zoom out and then zoom in somewhere else to get that effect. And I'm going to also block vision up here, since this down here will be the lower elevation. We're going to block vision there. And you notice I didn't remove the movement. I can remove the movement separately, uh, so it's not a big deal if I leave it in place. It actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense to not be able to see up the edges there, but don't worry about that. All right, we have some vision blocking. Let's remove our movement blocking from this map. And in fact, oops, I need to hold control. In fact, I actually want to block everything but the lower elevations. So I'm going to actually change my mind, and we're going to remove the areas we want to be able to walk. It's not perfect, 
I'm not worrying about it. I'm going to let you go kind of overlap a little with the upper area here. And we're just kind of carving out some squares that we are allowing players to move on at these lower elevations. Great. This is the river, negative 15. Let's say down here is going to be negative 30 or so. Um, negative 15 might also include some of this intermediate space. Uh, this isn't so important. It's kind of fiddly. But maybe we'll use that later. Uh, and I'm going to make another lead up there. Okay. That's pretty great. Uh, now if I move the hero down here, and hit minus 15 down here. The hero is now underneath, and something you'll notice is, there we go, we got the site. The site doesn't always return or set properly, but it works. And you'll also notice that I'm over the eagle when I click on it. Changing elevation tries to prioritize the token you should be selecting over the others. Uh, so let's go back to the river layer and our hero. I can't move down there, but I can see down there, but I can't see up above. And that's exactly what I wanted. However, it is a little awkward to look like you're on the bridge when you're under the bridge. So I've made a special token just for that purpose. We're going to add this token. It's the bridge patch, I'm going to actually add it to the background layer. So I can select background first, drag it over. And if I actually can snap this to the grid, and it should fit perfectly. There we go. Now we look like we're under. Of course, this is a problem. If I go to the ground, it doesn't look very good. So we're going to click on that patch, and we're going to link it to the river elevation. So it'll only appear at that elevation. We're going to hit link, click river, and now, oh, I'm on the background layer still, don't want, you see how it highlighted, that was the is elevation token um, state we created, just tells you that this is linked, uh, this token is linked to this elevation, I call that an elevation token. So now if we change to the ground key elevation, that vanishes, you can see I'm under the bridge, eagle is above us. Pretty good. Uh, so now that's most of the features of the library. Uh, let's say my hero wants to move up here and then I just click the up. I can also pick which elevation I want to set them to but I like the up down arrows in the lower right here. Additionally if I select the eagle and the hero there's a little triangle delta which shows there's 69 units apart. Um, if I move the eagle and I select that 65, if you impersonate your hero, then anything you click on, it will show you. Uh, oh, <laughs> I guess it doesn't refresh until you click off of an object and then back onto it. But it, it'll refresh. It'll show you how far away you are from something. All right. Um, that's our three elevations that we created. Uh, right now the hero is on ground and I can move across the bridge and we can see that really clearly. When we look at the VBL we can go to river, river is available, ground is available, and flying is available. All right, thanks for watching. Um, there is on the GitHub some links. Oh. Uh, you can go to the latest release, the forum post, uh, you can comment and ask questions on the forum, um, and there's some documentation on the wiki. Uh, there's the forum post, and here's the wiki. It has quite a bit of information for you to understand how to use it and how it works. Uh, additionally, I, I'm on Discord all the time. I am Melek, uh, and here's the address down here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helps, and I really hope that if you use it, you give me feedback and if you find any killer bugs or small bugs, go ahead and post them as an issue on GitHub or let me know in Discord or on the forum post. Thanks so much. All right. Have fun.